Well, I'm at the pre-stage drawing the, the actual picture, uh, the actual painting, and the whole idea is to draw it as close and, and as, as fine as possible so that when the time comes to paint, it is a lot easier because you have the definition and you have everything drawn exactly. Of course, I do quite a few things. I change the background a bit. In this case, I've taken this rock away and I've put it over here. I'll probably put a couple more rocks next to it. Um, but yeah, this is a pencil drawing and what I do when this is done, I'll fix it and I'll put my underpainting. And if there's any masking, I'll do the masking and uh, Final drawing uh, on the two horse uh, images. Um, what I had to do is I had to take one of the horses out of here. There was a horse in front of this black horse, and it just confused everything there. So I took it out, and uh, I think it's obviously going to make it look better. Doesn't look so spread out, and hopefully um, I can do the wash this afternoon and then start painting. Well, I'm doing the uh, underwash for the uh, painting I've just drawn and uh, it's a burnt sienna acrylic and the reason I do this is because um, it takes the canvas off white and it gives me an opportunity to make the colours I've put down pop and um, it, it's a very loose and very easy to do so this is how I do it. I've mixed my acrylic with, uh, with water, thinned it down now I just roll it it goes pretty quick and the whole idea is just so that it's off white it doesn't have to be dark you don't want to take the uh, sorry, cover the drawing that you've just done so it's a very light wash but at least it's off white that's the most what I do once I put the acrylic on with a roller, I then take some kitchen towel and I'll just give it a wipe. one of my little fan brushes that you know we talk about a lot these brushes are only good basically for me is when they been used a lot and been damaged a bit and then I can use them as stipping brushes for my roads for my sand then I'll come back and I'll start highlighting with, uh, with these, these brushes and we'll take it from there once this is done stage now where I'm just about finished with the basic shaping of um, these bushes and shrubs. Um, got a little piece to do here. Once this is done, I'll then start with my fan brushes again. You know, these uh, dilapidated brushes that I enjoy using for um, bushes and trees and so on. So once this is done, then I'll come back and I'll start highlighting with uh, with these these brushes and we'll take it from there once this is done you can see I've started phasing in a little bit of dust here it's not complete yet but once I've started the road and the shadows um, I'll start putting more dust in and uh, and then start the two horsemen and uh, I'm looking forward to that well um 
I'm busy with this Arizona landscape. Um, two horsemen riding up the hill. And uh, what I'm busy doing right now is stippling. Have a few brushes that are a little dilapidated, which is the way I like them, you know, when they bent and buckled. And the whole idea is that when I get to finalizing, I let it dry to a point, but when I get to finalizing the color and the highlights, you can see what I'm doing here. And what I normally do is I do my palette from all the tones, as you can see here, you know, using the basic colors, which is olive green, sap green, um, I use French ultramarine, mauve blue shade, uh, Payne's gray, and then I use uh, buff titanium, which to me is probably one of the most important colors. Then I have raw sienna, yellow ochre, um, yellow, uh, um, Naples yellow deep, and Naples yellow light. And those are, for the bushes, those are my basic colors. Um, and obviously here I'm using, these are my sand colors and some of my blending colors. And uh, all my greens start from the dark and they go right all the way down to the medium. And then of course, the different tones of greens for the different bushes using uh, cadmium yellow, light cadmium yellow. And then this is, um, uh, crimson and the crimson I used to tone down for instance getting highlights here using crimson and and parts of my grays and the, the light greens to get this tone here and that is part of the bushes as you can see here that bush there that bush and a few other bushes in between tend to have that blend um, and when you stand back on the painting it doesn't stand out much, but it actually shows you um, more or less where the different tones of bush are. So, and I think I'm about there once that's done I'm able to take this masking um, gum off using a bungee which I make myself out of the same material um, and then once that's done and dry I can start working on the horse I'm able to take this masking um, gum off using a bungee which I make myself out of the same material um, and then once that's done and dry I can start working on the horse. <laughs> 